Bow Crystal here, SavvyBroker.com. What's going to end up happening in some of the information that I give you folks is it's going to give buyers that become homeowners that then become sellers. It's going to give you tips on how to help you through certain situations, but with this next topic, it's going to actually give tips on how to do bad things to real estate consumers. So, but I'm going to say it anyway because the consumer needs to know what can happen so they can look out for it. The best thing to do is to know what you're buying before you buy it and to follow all of our little tips here in all of my videos on what to know before you buy. And I don't mean home inspectors and realtors and real estate, uh, all of these professions, they're not what's going to really tell you the truth about what you're buying before you buy it. I am going to tell you how to find out. So, say you've gotten yourself into a lawsuit because a realtor lied to you. They, they didn't disclose something they knew. And a seller lied about not knowing that there was issues with the house. So adverse material facts, latent defects, issues came up after you bought the house. So say this happened to you and you launch into a lawsuit. Well, you pretty much have to, right? Because everything's proven and, and you're going to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and in some cases millions of dollars to fix the problem. So you kind of have to sue. So what can happen is, um, and I'm just giving you a little bit of tidbits here, there's a whole lot of things that happen and a whole lot of where the attorney treats you real bad and runs you around and it's, it's a sick, sick game and I want to keep you guys out of that game. So what this topic is about is a seller hiding their assets, okay? So you've got everything proven on the seller and they know you've got them and they know they've lied and they know that everybody's turning them in and everything's coming together. So the attorneys, there's this thing called discovery, right? So the attorneys say, well, we got this and we know this and, and we, they give that to the other attorney say the buyer you know got the bad property they give that to the other attorney and it's called discovery so then the seller has a few months to come up with the answers you know things like stupid stuff like um, how many real estate transactions have you been in and um, what's your name and how many real estate um, properties have you owned and you know where did you go to college and I mean the things they ask you just actually quite lame actually but each time these questions go back and forth sometimes it takes months to answer and, and in this particular situation, the seller did take months. And then he complained because, well, his wife was sick, or he'd actually lie sometimes. Well, I have to go out of town because of this or because of that, right? So in this time of stalling, which was, sorry about that, actually, it was like um, two and a half years of stalling. The attorneys let it happen. What the attorney should have done is come right in and seized all their property and did a, what is it, a Liz penance or whatever, but they didn't. God, the seller was, you know, kind of old and, well, he committed fraud and he hurt the consumer very bad, very deliberate, put their life, all of their assets and friends, family in jeopardy and, well, you know, give him the time to answer. So two and a half years later, this case ended and that's a long story and a story for another day. However, in the meantime, the seller switched all of his assets over to family members, right? And the attorney didn't, didn't put, attach anything onto the property. Even though the real estate consumer was like, why aren't you stopping them? Why aren't you doing this? Well, you know, the attorney had already made up their mind what the real estate consumer deserved. And they were fighting for what would get them to their paycheck the faster. Again, that for another, another day. But the seller hid their assets, turned it over to other family members. Okay, did quick claims, um, bought gold, hid the gold, had diamonds, uh, hid the diamonds. And then also they had one asset left besides their house. And with that, what they did was with their, their crooked real estate agent that lied too, they used that agent to sell this property. And the, there was going to be a sale, but it kind of fell through. And the attorneys were going to just let it happen. They're like, oh, well, there's nothing we can do. It's a crooked system beyond belief. But what ended up happening is when you get to the settlement statement, the settlement statement, the settlement table, which we'll talk about later, another fraudulent scam and consumer. Urgh. But when you get there, the they had hid their last asset, and guess how they hid their last asset? Well, the realtor, it was about half a million dollars, filled out this little piece of paper, and it was a lease option. So someone had leased the property for a year, and they had an option to buy. That's called tied up. So the property's tied up, can't offer it. Well, 
This guy lied and cheated on every level to the tune of millions of dollars and there's nothing anybody could really do. So, you gotta know this stuff, folks. Um, don't get into these situations in the first place. I'd love to help you be able to not get into these situations because once you do, kind of doesn't matter how much proof you have, kind of doesn't matter how bad things are, how much stress you go through. It's really, really hard to get things made right and you're never going to get those sleepless nights back and you're never going to get that time back and I just want to help you not have to go through what I've been through, what I've seen people I care about go through, what I've seen real estate consumers go through. So check out realestateindustrywhistleblower.com and have a great day.